Chapter 57 Jarrah beholds heaven open. Here, the loveliest Jarrah lift her beautiful heavenly blue eyes to the heavens, and looks as if transfigured, full of the highest delight, into the depths of heavens opened to her eyes. Only after a considerable while she begins to stammer rather than speaking, with a heavenly pure and soft voice like this. Ah, 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 oh, you great, exceedingly holy God. What endless delight do I see now? The endless large heavens are filled with the most blessed angels. Oh, how endless blessed must they be. However, the poor Jarrah is still more blessed. For the everlasting throne in the large centre of the endless wide heavens, surrounded by countless crowds of angels kneeling on sun-bright clouds, and keep calling, Holy is he whose throne is standing here. O oh, rejoice, you eternities! Soon he will have completed the never-describable work on earth and will come and occupy this throne of glory of God, currently empty. But he who forever has the right to sit on it sits now as a person with the poor Jarrah. Oh, praise and praise him, for his is the everlasting throne of all divine power and glory. After these words, she collapses onto my chest after the vision has been closed for her, and says, O you great, only holy, do not reject me, poor, weak Jarrah, for I still dare to keep loving you. But I can't help it that my heart still keeps loving more. Say I, Yes, you my little heart, Behold, therefore I have showed you my glory and my kingdom, because I want it that you keep loving me more and more. Love therefore as much as you can, since such love will not harm you. Thereupon Jarrah clasps me with both hands and presses me as hard as possible to her heart, and I say to the bystanders who are absolutely silent of astonishment, There, see, and let it be an example for you. This little maiden, only twelve years old, shows me love in a way I have not experienced in the whole of Israel. But to him who loves me like her, I will give what this world has not seen before and Israel never has felt nor tasted. After this above all measure edifying scene, which lasted for about an hour, the servants of Ebal came and asked if it was time to bring the evening meal. Says Ebal, If our Lord Jesus agrees to it, then you can bring it. Say I, Bring what you have, for love gives and enjoys, and I also want to enjoy what I have given. However, My most preferred food is here this little girl, since she gives to me what eternity had not given to me and also never was able to give. Thereupon the servants left to fetch the prepared food. But they make dreadfully wide eyes when nothing was left of their prepared foods, but instead the pantry was filled with the best and most exotic foods and the noblest of fruit and full of the best-tasting wine. Soon they return and tell with astonishing zeal what happened in the kitchen during their absence, asking us. And they continued to ask if they could bring the new foods or if they should start fresh cooking. Say I, what you find in the pantry, bring to us. For today you all will be my guests. 
My disciples, the two Essenes and the Pharisees, have already been given the food which you have prepared. Do not disturb them, for they still have to carry out a great task in my name, which will heavily demand their strength until midnight. Thereupon the servants went to fetch the heavenly food. But Ebal and the centurion spoke with exhilaration. Lord, this type of manifestation no longer surprises us, since we see only too clearly that you are the Lord to whom nothing is impossible. The only big question left in us is, how did we make ourselves worthy of such grace? However, I said, the meals from the heavens are already coming. Let us continue the discussion after the meal. The foods are set down on the table. Thanks is given, and all reach out and eat and drink with cheer, after my encouragement to do so. And the centurion confesses that he never before has eaten such palatable, heavenly dishes, nor drank such exquisite wine. My Jara too tucks into it, saying, Nothing like it ever touched her palate, nor satisfied her stomach like it. In short, none can praise the taste of the foods too highly, starting to loudly praise me as the good father in heaven. <laughs>